Tuesday, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans took up the state's controversial voter ID law, and this is after a federal judge ruled it unconstitutional last year. We've been talking about this in the process leading up to today, and to talk more about that is Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune. Thank you for being with us again this morning. Thank you for having me. Okay, so give us a look at what this judge, these um, three judge panel, what did they question? What was their focus on when it comes to this? Well, one of the federal federal appellate judges in particular uh, was just questioning the state saying, you know, this bill, this law rather, yeah. has been playing out for four years in the federal courts. Why has the legislature not addressed some of the concerns? And that concern being that it's intentionally discriminated against African Americans and Hispanics as far as, you know, it's one of the strictest voter ID laws in the nation for the, the limited IDs that it does accept in order to vote. And because of that, the judges were like, well, why are we deciding this when the legislature is in session? Right, so is the legislature doing something about it this time around then? No, oh. there's not any movement right now to address this. Uh, the expectation is that if the state loses, the Fifth Circuit rules against the state and finds the law uh, unconstitutional, that uh, Governor Abbott might call the legislature back for a special session to address it. Already talking about a special session. Well, possibility. Maybe, this one hasn't ended just yet. But there is something that's happening right now in the Senate. Um, it approved a proposal requiring every candidate, I thought this was interesting, um, in Texas to take a drug test before he or she files to run. How did something like that even get brought up? What happened? Well, we've heard it uh, in the past, you know, when uh, mainly Republicans were trying to move different uh, pieces of legislation, you know, r drug testing, welfare applicants, unemployment applicants, right. which did become law, right. unemployment insurance. Um, and this year, or this week rather, it was a Senator Eddie Lucio. He uh, tacked on an amendment to the ethics bill, talked about transparency, and if you know we want everything out there, then we should require political candidates at every level, from city council to statewide office, to submit to a uh, drug test, a urine drug test. That person, that candidate, would be required to pay for the drug test, okay. but their eligibility to run would not hinge on whether they pass the drug test. Really? The consequence would be that their results would be posted on the Texas Ethics Commission's website. And it would be open for everybody to see publicly. Right. I guess. So in doing your research, going to the ballot, hopefully, to see who you're going to vote for, that's among the checks. Right, that you would check and see, did this person pass their their drug test. Right. Okay, um, but at the highest level, the U.S. Supreme Court kind of overturned something like this that they were looking at. This was two years ago, right? No, actually, it was 97. 97. Yeah, okay. in the, it was a Georgia law that did, uh, the passage of a drug test did hinge on their, their eligibility. Um, of course, you know, like I said, this one doesn't hinge on that, but that case, uh, Supreme Court found that it violated the Fourth Amendment, unreasonable search and seizure. So the privacy concerns as far as putting these results online might come into play here if uh, this does become law, but it has a lot more uh, steps to go in the legislative process before that happens. It'll be interesting to see who pushes back against this saying, nah, I don't really want to well, do that. Well, we'll see in the House, which is where it uh, lands next. Okay. Uh, Arlana, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Look forward to talking to you again next week to see what else is brewing over at the Capitol. Thank you. All right.